All right, Shalom. I want to start off by giving all praises to Yahweh, Bahasham, Yahweh Shai, Bahasham Rakakwadash. Yahweh is the true, holy, and powerful name of the Heavenly Father, Bahasham, meaning in the name. Yahweh Shai is the true, holy, and powerful name of His only begotten Son, who is the Savior of the nation of Israel, starting off with the elect within the nation of Israel. And Israel consists of you so called Negroes, Hispanics, and Native Americans, as well as you Israelite foreigners scattered abroad that may look like the nations where you've been scattered to, but are Israelites. And I also want to give double honors to the elders and apostles of Great Millstone who rule well. Peace and salutations to the hopeful elect, pushing out this word in all sincerity and in truth. All right, this is the brother you call from the GMS branch out in Des Moines. I will come back at you with another lesson inspired by the Holy Spirit, Haber And um, in this lesson, what I want to do, Lord's will, is uh, read um, through Galatians, the third chapter, starting at the 16th verse, all the way down through the end. And um, what led me to, uh, to coming across this or... Going into this was uh, actually the spirit had me uh, look up spiritual Israel. All right. And um, one of the scriptures that Christians try and use. All right. To uh, to say that the Lord is not dealing with the physical descendants um, only of uh, Abraham, Isaac and Jacob all right, to receive the promises. OK, but that he's extended it to the heathen. All right. Uh, this is one of the primary chapters uh, that popped up. For them to go into to justify that. All right. So when you actually read in the context uh, within this chapter, it's clear that Paul is only speaking to uh, 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 Israelites. All right. And that these promises, as they were established in the beginning, were only with the physical seed and descendants of Abraham, Isaac and Jacob, that that hasn't been changed. All right. And that that has not been altered. All right. As it says here in the book of uh, Psalms. All right. This is the book of Psalms, chapter 89, verse 34 says, my covenant will I not break nor alter the thing that has gone out of my lips. All right. So when the Lord gave that promise to Abraham, all right, the Lord didn't alter that. OK. And that uh, promise was established with the physical descendants of Abraham. All right. And it uh, came down to Isaac and uh, rested upon Jacob. All right. This is the book of Malachi, chapter three and verse six. It says, for I'm the Lord, Yahweh, I change not. Therefore, you sons of Jacob are not consumed. All right. So once again, the Lord didn't change that. All right. And uh, without further ado, we're going to hop right into it. Um, and I'll grab, you know, whatever, whatever points the Lord uh, provides me with through his Holy Spirit. And um, Lord's will just be edifying. All right. But this is the book of Galatians, chapter three, verse 16. It says now to Abraham and his seed were the promises made. He said not and to seeds as of many, but as of one and to thy seed, which is Mashiach. All right. So Abraham had other children besides Isaac, but Isaac was the seed of the promise. All right. And that's who the covenant all right, was established with. OK, verse 17, it says, and this I say that the covenant that was confirmed before of the Most High in Mashiach, the law, which was 430 years after, cannot disannul that it should make the promise of none effect. OK. Now, Paul is saying this because the Jews at this time had the mentality that if you weren't keeping of the Mosaic law, all right, as they were raised up keeping the law, okay, that that would uh, cancel you out from receiving of the promises and uh, uh, the blessings and salvation and so on and so forth. So what Paul was going back to reiterate, all right, to the Jews was that what? That when it came down to the promise of Abraham, that this came hundreds of years prior before the law. All right. And the law wasn't going to be able to to disannul what the Lord had already promised unto Abraham. All right. As a matter of fact, let's just go ahead and read this in another translation. All right. This is a uh, yeah, we'll read in the NLT. All right. All right. It says, uh, this is, uh, the NLT says, this is what I'm trying to say. The agreement the most high made with Abraham cannot be canceled 430 years later. when the most high gave the law to Moses, the most high will be breaking his promise. All right. Let's read it in the, uh, NIV. What I mean is this, the law introduced 430 years later does not set aside the covenant previously established by the most high and thus do away with the promise. All right. And this is what Paul was getting through to the uh, to the Jews, man. Now, let's grab this in the book of Leviticus just to show you an example all right, of uh, why all right, the Jews had this type of mentality towards the Gentiles and the Gentiles being the Israelite foreigners that were keeping other customs, man. All right. Which is why they were being called Gentiles. As a matter of fact, we can prove that very quickly here. All right. With a couple of precepts. All right. Let's grab this in the book of Corinthians. 
All right. Uh, this is the book of uh, 2 Corinthians, or 1 Corinthians, chapter 12, and verse uh, 1. Now concerning spiritual gifts, brethren, I would not have you ignorant. Ye know that ye were Gentiles carried away unto these dumb idols, even as ye were led. So Paul is saying that these Israelites, all right, at one point, they were Gentiles. Now, was he saying that at one point you were a literal Moabite, all right, that you were the literal descendant of uh, uh, of Ham, and now all of a sudden you're an Israelite now? No, okay. He said it there clearly. You know that you were Gentiles carried away into these dumb idols even as you were led. So it was because of idolatry, all right, that had our people being looked at as Gentiles in the eyes of the Lord and the uh the eyes of the the other israelites man all right the jews okay this is the book of ezekiel chapter 14 and verse 5 it says that i may take the house of israel in their own heart because they are all estranged from me through their idols all right so because of idolatry that's what caused us to be estranged from the heavenly father and this is another precept i forget exactly where it's at so let me just scan real quick i believe it's ezekiel 20 uh, what is it? Yep, Ezekiel chapter 20 and 32. Let's pull this up. Ezekiel 20 and 32. All right. It says, uh, it says, and that which cometh into your mind shall not be at all that you say we will be as the heathen, as the families of the countries to serve wood and stone. All right. So that's what made our people like the heathen, was serving wood and stone. The scripture says in the book of Psalms how we were mingled among the heathen and learned their works. So you have to understand the history. Or you had a separation between Jake that grew up keeping the customs, holding fast to the covenant. All right. And then you had Israelites that were just out there. All right. Wild branches. OK. But they were still Israelites by nationality, but they were keeping other uh, uh uh, other customs and doing different abominable acts, man. All right. So going back into the mentality of the Jews, after reading something like this, Leviticus 18 and 26, it says, you shall therefore keep my statutes and my judgments and shall not commit any of these abominations, neither any of your own nation nor any stranger that sojourneth among you. For all these abominations have the men of the land done, which were before you. And the land is defiled, that the land spew not you out also when ye defile it. As it spewed out the nations that were before you for whosoever shall commit any of these abominations, even the souls that commit them shall be cut off from among their people. Right. So when the Jews would read something like this, they would take it as, OK, well, there's no way that these uh, Israelites that were doing these different abominations. All right. Might have had a, a, <laughs> a different type of brandings on them. Walking around in togas, not wearing uh, the garments, you know, but walking around in togas eating all types of abominations, they were looking at them and disgust, like, ain't no way in hell they're going to receive the promises, okay, that they're going to have access to these things, all right, because they're cut off from among the people, right? But Paul had to go back and clarify these things to show that they would still have access through faith and belief in Yahweh Shai, all right, to receive these promises, man, all right? It says, uh, therefore, shall you keep in mind uh, therefore shall ye keep mine ordinance that ye commit not any one of these abominable customs, which that's what the Gentiles were doing, all right, which were committed before you, and that ye defile not yourselves therein. I am the Lord, Yahweh, your power, all right? So that kind of gives you a better uh, a snapshot of the mentality that the Jews were having, all right, when they were looking at the, the Gentiles, the Israelite foreigners, those that were of the uncircumcision coming in, all right? But let's grab this in the book of Romans, the fourth chapter, because Paul is going to let you know that they still were going to have access. All right. If they repented. All right. It had uh, faith in Yahweh Shai, man. All right. Showed the faith of Abraham. All right. This is Romans chapter four and verse five. It says, but to him that worketh not, but believeth on him. Now, when it says worketh that, it means that what? To him that wasn't keeping the law. All right. They weren't keeping the works of the law, but believeth on him that justified the ungodly. His faith is counted for righteousness. All right, so Paul had to let it be known that, look, this is going to be through faith, all right, that we'll receive these things, not through the works of the law. As he says in Galatians, the second chapter, it says that no man is justified by the works of the law, all right? Even further up in Galatians, the third chapter, all right, he talks about that 
uh, um, well, he mentions the same thing, man. Okay. That no man is justified in the sight of the heavenly father through the works of the law. So not only the Gentiles needed access, all right, to these promises through the faith in Yahweh Shai, but even the Jews, okay? They were walking around high and mighty as if they had it, but they were considered in sin, all right? They were considered uh, uh, guilty, all right? And Paul had to reiterate those points, but this is Romans chapter four and verse five, but to him that worketh not, but believeth on him that justified the ungodly, his faith is counted for righteousness, even as David also describeth the blessedness of the man unto whom the Most High imputeth righteousness without works. Verse 7, saying, Blessed are they whose iniquities are forgiven and whose sins are covered. Blessed is the man to whom the Lord will not impute sin. All right, and that's uh, out of the book of Psalms, the 32nd chapter. So it's talking about certain people being justified, all right, through faith, okay? It says, verse 9, Cometh this blessedness then upon circumcision only? Or upon the uncircumcision also. So Paul's like, look, oh, so they're gonna be the one. <laughs> so I guess so Paul was saying that, oh, okay. So you think this is just gonna come upon y'all that's keeping the that were keeping the customs, or do they have access to the same faith as well? All right, to be justified as well. Just like you need to be justified, just like your sins need to be covered, right? It says, For we say that faith was reckoned to Abraham for righteousness. How was it then reckoned? When he was in circumcision or in uncircumcision. Not in circumcision, but in uncircumcision, right? So when you read in the in the history in Genesis the uh, 15th chapter, it says that Abraham or Abram at that time, his faith was accounted to him uh, as righteousness. All right, he didn't get circumcised at least until 13, uh, 13 years later. Okay, because at that time when you read in the 15th chapter, all right, the Lord had told him, all right, that uh that um he was gonna have a seed. He didn't have a uh, uh, Ishmael at that time yet. All right, he was talking about having one of his servants receive of his uh, inheritance, but the Lord had told him that he was going to eventually have a seed. All right, and then later on, he had to let him know that even Ishmael that wasn't going to be the seed of the promise, but that it was going to be Isaac. But it was at least thirteen years later. But this is the point that Paul is making. All right, that his faith was accounted to him as righteousness without having, or uh, uh, without being a circumcision man. Okay. So just like the Gentiles that were uncircumcised, all right, were in uncircumcision, if they had faith, just as Abraham showed faith, they'll be able to receive those promises. This is what Paul is breaking down. All right, Romans chapter four and verse uh, nine, come with this blessedness then upon the circumcision only or upon uh, the uncircumcision also. For we say that faith was reckoned to Abraham for righteousness. Verse 10, how was it then reckoned? When he was in circumcision or in uncircumcision? Not in circumcision, but in uncircumcision. Verse 11, and he received the sign of circumcision, a seal of the righteousness of the faith, which he had yet being uncircumcised. All right. See, he was accounted as righteous through his faith before, all right, the circumcision, okay? That he might be the father of all of them that believe, though they be not circumcised, that righteousness might be imputed unto them also. Okay, so he's letting it be known that, hey, they could have righteousness imputed unto them even though they weren't keeping the works of the law at that time, all right? It says, verse 12, it says, and the father of circumcision to them who are not of the circumcision only, but also, but who also walk in the steps of that faith of our father Abraham, which he had being yet uncircumcised. All right, it says, um, yeah, we're going to keep reading through. It says, verse 13, for the promise that he should be the heir of the world was not to Abraham or to his seed through the law, but through the righteousness of faith. Okay, going back into that Galatians, the law wasn't going to disannul, all right, and not allow all right, uh, 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 certain Israelites to have access to those promises. He's like, the law came way later. The Lord was going to fulfill his promise to, uh, to Abraham that his seed would inherit all right, uh, uh, the promises. And one of the, 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 the focal point of the promises to Abraham is the land. And the land was promised to go to no other people. And we'll revisit that Lord's will. But verse 14, it says, for if they which are of the law be heirs, faith is made void and the promise made of none effect because the law worketh wrath for where no law is, there is no transgression. So pretty much Paul is breaking it down, man. Letting it be known that they'll be able to still receive the promises. 
Verse 16, therefore, it is a faith that it might be by grace to the end. The promise might be sure to all the seed. OK, so keep in mind. That promise was give going to be given to all the seed. All right. All of his descendants. OK, not to that only which is of the law, but to that also, which is of the faith of Abraham, who is the father of us all. All right. So there it goes right there. It was going to be to all the seed. Didn't matter where they was coming from, what they was doing. The Lord was going to make sure that he fulfilled that promise. All right. And given uh, and, and given us the land. And this is going to be fulfilled in the kingdom. All right. When we'll receive it at land in its fullness, man. All right. But let's go back to this in the book of Galatians. All right. This is back in Galatians chapter three and verse. Uh, let's read 17 again. And this I say that the covenant that was confirmed before of the most high in Mashiach, the law, which was 430 years late uh, after, cannot disannul that it should make the promise of none effect. Verse 18, for if the inheritance be of the law, it is no more of promise, but the Most High gave it to Abraham by promise. All right. So there's a separation. All right. As he's going to go into a little bit further, the separation between the promise, which was a free gift proclaimed to Abraham with no stipulations. And then we have the covenant, which has certain stipulations. We could only receive of those blessings if we kept the law. That wasn't the same with the uh, promise to Abraham. There weren't stipulations. All right. It wasn't like, OK, well, Abraham, your seed is going to receive of this if X, Y and Z. Nah. All right. It was already said that this is what's going to happen. All right. And the Lord made a way. All right. For that to uh, to happen through Yahweh Shai. Verse 19. It says, uh, wherefore then serveth the law. It was added because of transgressions. Till the seed should come to whom the promise was made, and it was ordained by angels in the hand of a mediator. All right. Now, mediator is not a mediator of one, but the most high is one. Okay. So when you have a, a, a covenant that you have between two parties, all right, you have a mediator. All right. And there's stipulations. All right. You'll receive this, you'll get this if you're doing X, Y, and Z, and this and that and third. But he's letting you know that it was a difference between the covenant that was given, all right. Through who? The Heavenly Father giving the law unto Moses, all right, which was Moses was in the stead of a mediator between uh, uh, us and the Heavenly Father, all right, but he was letting it be known with, uh, with the promise to Abraham. There was no mediator. It was just giving a promise. There was no stipulations with that. It was just what the Lord had uh, uh, said he was going to do, all right? As a matter of fact, let me just read this in, the, um, in another translation. All right, well, uh, this is the NLT. It says, uh, now mediator is helpful if more than one party must reach an agreement. But the Most High, who was one, did not use a mediator when he gave his promise to Abraham. All right. So just kind of clarify and go into that. And you could read, uh, you could read up, you know, in uh, other translations, look up commentaries. They go into it as well. But it says, um, is the law then, verse 21, against the promises of the Most High? Yeah, I will forbid. For if there had been a, a law given, which could have given life. Verily, righteousness should have been by the law. All right. So when you go back in the law, OK, <laughs> there was pretty much no way that we'd be able to be accounted as righteous. All right. Or justified in the uh, eyes of the Lord. OK. Unless we could keep all of those things and we couldn't do it. All right. As a matter of fact, we'll grab this in the book of uh, Deuteronomy. Well, you know what? I think I got it up. This is Deuteronomy chapter six and verse. Uh, where is it at? Is it Deuteronomy 6? Just bear with me. I think it is maybe 30, 24. Yep. All right. This is Deuteronomy chapter 6 and verse uh, 24. It says, uh, yeah, I'll start here. And the Lord commanded us to do all these statutes. Keep in mind, it says all these statutes to fear the Lord, Yahweh, our power for our our good for our good always that he might preserve us alive as it is at this day. It says, and it shall be our righteousness if we observe to do all these commandments before the Lord Yahweh, our power, as he hath commanded us. So we could only be accounted as righteous and justified before the throne, all right, under this covenant, if we could keep all of the things that were written in the law, all right? Without skipping nothing, all right? 
That's why Paul says this. This is the book of Galatians chapter 3 and the next verse. Verse 22. But the scripture hath concluded all under sin. All right. Because we couldn't do that. That the promise by faith of Yahweh Mashiach might be given to them that believe. All right. So it concluded that what all were under sin, man. All right. Let's grab this in the book of James and then we're going to revisit this. This is the book of James chapter 2 and verse uh, 10. For whosoever shall keep the whole law and yet offend in one point, he is guilty of all. All right. So that's straight to the point. All right. So we couldn't keep this, man. All right. So this will force us to lean and trust in the faith in the sacrifice that Yahweh Shai made. And the Lord had already had to set up from the beginning, man. All right. It was already set up for the pathway and access to these things to be through Yahweh Shai. All right. And having the law show for it that, look, <laughs> we are all guilty, man. All right. So let's read this in again. Uh, again, uh, Galatians chapter 3 and verse uh, 22. It says, But the scripture hath concluded all under sin. Now, just reading in the context of what we read so far, this is clearly only talking about Israel. All right. Because as we jump further, this is when they want to jump in. Oh, well, it's talking about spiritual Israel and heathen. At no point was this talking about <laughs> uh, uh, some some heathen. All right. That 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 uh, converted, tried to keep the customs and this and then the third. No, man. This is all talking about Israel. All right. It says this in the book of. um. Let me see. Uh, all right. Yeah. So let's go into this. It says, uh, but the scripture hath concluded all under sin. Now, what is sin? All right. This is uh, the book of First uh, John, chapter three and verse four. Whosoever committed sin transgresseth also the law for sin is the transgression of the law. All right. So the ones that were uh, uh, under sin. All right. Was who? Those that were given the law. Who was the law given to? This is the book of Psalm 75 and eight. For in the hand of the Lord, Yahweh, there's a cup. Uh, no, nah, not Psalm 75 and eight. Uh, Psalms 78 and five. So I like you. All right, this is the book of uh, Psalms, chapter 78 and verse five. It says, for he established a testimony in Jacob and appointed a law in Israel. Plain and simple. So this contract was between the heavenly father and the Israelites. All right. For he established a testimony in Jacob and appointed a law in Israel, which he commanded our fathers that they should make them known to their children. So this is something that was passed down through our lineage, through our uh, uh, our family lines, man. All right. Plain and simple. OK, this is the book of uh, Psalms 147 and verse 19. He showeth his word unto Jacob, his statutes and his judgments unto Israel. He hath not dealt so with any nation. And as for his judgments, they have not known them. Praise ye the Lord. Yahweh. Bahasham, Yahweh Shai, man. Okay. Plain and simple. All right. So this ain't talking about no heathen. All right. This ain't talking about no, 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 whatever. All right. They try and say it is, man. This is talking about physical Israelites, man. All right. Even when you think about it in a regular contract, let's say that uh LeBron, all right. LeBron, he's got a contract with Nike. Okay. Nike says that we're gonna pay you five million dollars a year, all right. If you follow these uh, requirements and the requirement is that you got to wear nothing but Nike when you get out the house. All right. You can't be seen wearing no Reebok. You can't be seen wearing no Adidas. You got to wear Nike every time you step out the house, man. All right. Now, let's say Billy. OK, Edomite my Billy. All right. Let's say that he walks outside with some uh, Adidas on. All right. Billy walks outside with Adidas on. That has no effect on Billy. Why is that? Because he's not under that covenant. He's not within that agreement, all right, that Nike has made with LeBron, all right? Or let's say Billy wants to wear Nike all the time. He hears about this contract like, dang, man, LeBron finna get how much? Five million a year for wearing Nike all the time? And Billy's walking around like, you know, I'm finna wear Nike all the time, you know? <laughs> all right. And then the end of the year comes. Billy's been wearing his Nike socks. All right, his 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 Nike headband, wristbands, and everything like that. All right, Nike down from head to toe, everywhere he goes, he calls up Nike and like, yeah, man, you know, I, I saw the contract, you know, and it said that uh, you know, you're wearing your Nikes everywhere you go, and I ain't wearing no Adidas and this and that and the third. All right, let me let me get a uh, uh that 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 five mil. Nike is gonna sit there and laugh at him. 
<laughs> Why is that? Because that contract was not made between Nike and Billy. That contract was made between LeBron and Nike. He is nowhere in that, man. And that's the same thing with these heathen trying to incorporate themselves in our covenant, in our contract. You are not a part of this, all right? Not at all, man, okay? Now, if, if LeBron, he goes outside of that contract, he's the one that's being punished. Billy ain't getting punished if he walk outside with the Adidas and the Reebok, all right? He ain't losing no money because of that. Why? Because he's not under. And it's the same thing, man. It's a, simple, it's a contract. It's, it's plain and simple. And that's what it says pretty much in the scriptures, all right, concerning uh, Israel, man, all right? And this is why we're suffering the way that we're suffering because we're under the contract, all right? This is uh, Amos 3 and 1. Hear this word that the Lord Yahweh has spoken against you, O children of Israel, against the whole family which I brought up from the land of Egypt, saying, you only have I known of all the families of the earth. You're the only ones under this contract, all right? Therefore, I will punish you for all your iniquities, okay? So was there a spiritual Israel that had to suffer their curses, all right, <laughs> because of not keeping the contract? No. Did the heathen have to suffer their curses for not keeping the contract? No. Why is that? Because they were not under it. All right. They can't be considered as breaking the contract because they're not under it. When Billy walks outside, he's not a breaker of the contract because he's not under that contract. It's that simple. All right. It's that simple, man. All right. And the contract didn't alter. Okay. It didn't change. All right. To include Billy. Billy can change his name to LeBron James. All right. He could, uh, uh, you know, he could, he could go tanning, try and get a little melanin, right? But at the end of the day, he's not LeBron. He's not within that 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 covenant. All right, you heathen are not within the covenant, man. Plain and simple. All right. So let's uh, grab this in Daniel, Daniel chapter nine and verse ten, reiterating the point. Neither have we obeyed the voice of the Lord Yahweh our power. All right, to walk in His ways which he set before us by his servants, the prophets. Yea, all Israel have transgressed thy law. So once again, this is speaking about Israel transgressing the law, right? Even by departing that they might not obey thy voice. Therefore, the curse is poured upon us in the oath that is written in the law of Moses, the servant of the Most High, because we have sinned against him. And he hath confirmed his words which he spake against us and against our judges that judged us by bringing upon us a great evil for under the whole heaven hath not been done as hath been done upon Jerusalem. All right. So we had to suffer. All right. Uh, uh, the punishments that were written within the contract, man. Verse 13, it says, as it is written in the law of Moses, all this evil is come upon us. Yet may we not our prayer before the Lord, Yahweh, our power that we might turn from our iniquities and understand thy truth. All right. Um, that's that's all we need to read on that, man. OK, but showing you that we had to suffer these things, man, because we broke it. All right. So these uh, people talking about spiritual Israel, well, spiritual Israel need to go through the curses. Spiritual Israel needs to uh, uh, be put on slave ships. All right. They got to suffer the breach of the contract. You ain't finna just get the the, the, the blessing of it. Oh, yeah. Now, nah, y'all, y'all. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, y'all ain't got to suffer the, the, the curses, but you can get this this $5 million, all right, that belongs <laughs> to LeBron, okay, because you want to uh, wear your Nike outside, all right, or you heathen, you want to try and keep certain customs and everything like that, and that's what that's what them, uh, them, them gutter rats is doing in our land, man, okay, they're trying to keep certain customs, they done changed their names, all right, <laughs> They done done all, all, all this to try and fit themselves in the contract, and they're still outside of it, man. All right? Still outside of it, man. But anyways, let's uh, let's move on. Let's uh, go to this, Romans 3, straight to the point, verse 19. Now we know that what, what things soever the law said is said to them who are under the law. Okay? So whatsoever the, the, the law said is said to them who are under the law. These things do not concern the natural heathen. Why? Because they were not under the law. Plain and simple, all right? That every mouth may be stopped and all the world may become guilty before the Most High. All right, well, it says all the world is guilty before the Most High. Well, what world is this talking about? 
All right, you go into that word, it's the Greek word cosmos, and we already know who that's talking about, the world of Israel, Isaiah 45 and 17. But Israel shall be saved in the Lord with an everlasting salvation. Ye shall not be ashamed nor confounded world without end. All right, so this is the world that's guilty before the Most High. This is crucial to understand within the context as we go back to the Galatians, because there's no way that you can read all this context and talk about Israel, then all of a sudden you just want to throw a heathen in there. A natural heathen. No, all right. It says back in Romans 3 19. Now we know that whatsoever things the law saith, it saith to them who are under the law, that every mouth may be stopped and all the world may become guilty before the Most High. All right. So Paul is speaking to Israelites, man. Therefore, by the deeds of the law, there shall no flesh be justified in his sight, for by the law is the knowledge of sin. But now the righteousness of the Most High which without the law is manifested, being witnessed by the law and the prophets, even the righteousness of the Most High, which is by faith of Yahweh Mashiach, unto all and upon all them that believe, for there is no difference, right? So once again, reading in the context, who is this speaking about? <laughs> all Israel, verse uh, 23, for all have sinned and come short of the glory of the Most High being justified freely by his grace through the redemption that is in Yahweh Shai Mashiach. And he came to redeem who? The Israelites, man. All right. It says in the book of Isaiah and prophecy in the 59th chapter, the redeemer, the person bringing redemption, being Yahweh Shai, the redeemer shall come unto Zion and unto them that turn from transgressions in Jacob. So that's who Yahweh Shai is coming back for. That's who he's coming to redeem, his people. All right. Plain and simple. Okay. So let's go back to Galatians, Galatians chapter three and verse, uh, um, reading 22 again, but the scripture hath concluded all under sin and that all that is speaking about is all the nation of Israel. All right. It's not talking about, uh, uh any other nation. Okay. They aren't considered breachers of the contract because they aren't under the contract. That's why they didn't have to suffer. All right. <laughs> the punishments written in the contract. OK, it says that the promise by faith of Yahweh Shai Mashiach might be given to them that believe. All right. Once again, those that believe in Israel, man, within the nation of Israel. But before faith came, we were kept under the law. Who is the we? See, this is simple. All right. Reading comprehension. It says we were kept under the law. The heathen weren't kept under the law. All right. A spiritual heathen wasn't or a spiritual whatever <laughs> Israelite. That's a heathen. Nah, ain't talking about them, all right? It's talking about the, 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 the blood descendants of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, right? But before faith came, we were kept under the law, shut up unto the faith which should afterwards be revealed. Wherefore, the law was our schoolmaster to bring us into Yahweh Shai, that we might be justified by faith, all right? But after that faith has come, we are no longer under the schoolmaster. For ye are all the children of the Most High by faith in Yahweh Shai Mashiach. And bam, that's what they want to throw in the heathen. All right. See, you're all the children by faith. Well, <laughs> all this is talking about Israel, man. Okay. The ye that Paul is talking to are those that were under the law. As a matter of fact, let's jump over a chapter. Galatians chapter 4 and verse... Uh, uh, four it says, but when the fullness of time was come, the Most High sent forth His Son, made of a woman, made under the law, to redeem them that were under the law, that we might receive the adoption of sons. Hmm. Let's look up this word adoption. Let's see who this is talking about. All right, the adoption that pertains to the Israelites. That's Romans the ninth chapter. As a matter of fact, I'll pull that up as well. All right, Romans chapter 9, because who does this adoption pertain to? All right, this is Romans 9 and uh, 3, for I could wish that myself were accursed from Mashiach, for my brother and my kinsmen, according to the flesh, who are Israelites, to whom pertaineth the adoption. So the Israelites pertain the adoption that's being spoken about, and the glory, and the covenants, and the giving of the law, all given unto Israel, man. And the service of the Most High and the promises. Whose are the fathers and of whom as concerning the flesh Mashiach came, who is over all the Most High blessed forever. Amen. All right. So Paul makes it very clear. All right. Who this is for. Okay. 
So that word adoption in that Galatians, the fourth chapter that we read, adoption, it says the relationship which the Most High was pleased to establish between himself and the Israelites in preference to all other nations, man. Okay. Plain and simple. All right. Plain and simple. All right. So let's go back. Galatians chapter, uh, let's see if there's more on that for I'm going to read verse 6. And because ye are sons, the Most High has sent forth, forth the spirit of his son into your hearts, crying, Abba, Father. All right, so these are the sons of the Most High. All right, the physical Israelites. And even furthermore, those that believe, okay? Because even Yahweh Shai got on those uh, Pharisees in St. John, the 8th chapter. The 8th chapter, Yahweh Shai acknowledged. He was like, yeah, nah, y'all are the seed of Abraham. All right, but then Yahushua turned around and said, nah, you're not the seed of Abraham because you don't believe me. All right, so they were physical descendants, but what? They weren't following after the works of Abraham. All right, but they were still physical descendants. All right, so it still goes to let you know, yeah, we're physical descendants of Abraham, right? Isaac and Jacob, but we have to show forth those works as well. Okay, but a heathen, all right, can't hop up in there, okay, and think that he's going to be incorporated and the promises, man, even if he is trying to keep certain customs and everything like that, like our other, like uh, within our history, man, you had the uh, the, uh, 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 the certain heathen that were brought into our land. And uh, I believe that's in the uh, first or second Kings, the 17th chapter. All right. You had the certain woman that was at the well. OK, saying that, yeah, me and my my fathers, we worship in this mountain. Yeah, how should I turn around and had cutter? Yeah, you and your fathers ain't going to worship in this mountain again, man. OK. Why? Because <laughs> that land belongs to us and no other people. As a matter of fact, let's grab that real quick. I roughly paraphrased it. I believe it's St. John 4. All right, this is St. John chapter 4 and verse... Uh, Yep, uh, this is St. John chapter 4, and verse 19. The woman said unto him, Sir, I perceive that thou art a prophet. It says, Our fathers worshipped in this mountain, and ye say that in Jerusalem is the place where men ought to worship. Yehowah said unto her, Woman, believe me, the hour cometh when ye shall neither in this mountain nor yet at Jerusalem worship the Father. Why is Yehowah saying this? Because this woman was a heathen. All right? And that land, is allotted to who? Jerusalem is allotted to who? Only the Israelites, man. So he's like, yeah, nah, you ain't finna be up in this land, <laughs> okay? And we'll get the, uh, the 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 prophecies to show that, man, uh, uh, towards uh, uh, a little bit later on, Lord's will, man. But it says, verse 22, ye worship, ye know not what. We know what we worship, for salvation is of the Jews, all right? So Yahweh Shai, let it be known, <laughs> okay? Yeah, nah, you ain't finna be up in here. Are you heathen? Nah, all right. This is given it to who? The, the the Israelites, man. But anyways, let's go back to this in the book of uh, Galatians. You know, Lord's will, you know, this is all making, uh, making sense, you know, through the spirit. All right, but uh, this is the book of Galatians chapter uh, 3 and verse um, um, 26 again. It says, for ye are all the children of the Most High by faith in Yahweh Shai Mashiach. For as many of you... As have been baptized into Mashiach, have put on Mashiach. There's neither Jew nor Greek, right? Oh, see, neither Jew nor Greek. Okay. But Paul already iterated what he was speaking about. But just to go into the history, when you go into uh, uh, the Maccabees, man, you had our people that uh, converted to the Greek fascism, man. Okay. And even during this time, they were still speaking Greek. You had Greek speaking Jews, all right, that took on those different customs and fashions and so on and so forth, right? But Paul was letting it know that, look, hey, it don't matter if you 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 grew up speaking Greek, you were Hellenized, all right? If you have faith and believe in Yahweh Shai Mashiach, all right, you are part of that body. It says there's neither Jew nor Greek, there's neither bond nor free, there's neither male nor female. See, oh, see, male nor female. All right, see, if you, if you take that as a literal for what it sounds like, what is that, gender fluidity? All right, no, man, okay? It says, for ye are all one in Mashiach, Yahweh Shai, all right? Because these are all Israelites, man, okay? And through the faith and belief in Yahweh Shai, 
Hey, they continue in that faith. All receive the promise, man. No matter what background you had, no matter what customs you came up in or whatever the case it may be, you believe and repent, you'll receive of uh, 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 those promises, man. And if you be Mashiach, then are ye Abraham's seed and heirs according to the promise. Now, what is the promise? Okay. It says you are heirs according to the promise. Well, a part of that promise was once again, the, the land. Let's go to this in Genesis chapter 17 and verse five. Neither shall thy name anymore be called Abram, but thy name shall be Abraham. For a father of many nations have I made thee. So let's stop there. Okay. A father of many nations. All right. Let's address this real quick. This is the book of Genesis chapter 35 and verse 10. Before a Christian wants to get carried away. <laughs> it says, and the most High said unto him, thy name is Jacob. All right. Because when you read all right, that, that promise that came to Abraham fell upon Isaac and rested upon Jacob. You can read about read about that in uh uh multiple places, man. Uh Sirach, I think it's the, the 44th chapter. All right, where where it goes into that, man. That whole rundown. You know, and it's another place in the book of Psalms. All right, but it says, And the most I said unto him, Thy name is Jacob. Thy name shall not be called any more Jacob, but Israel shall be thy name. And he called his name Israel. And the most I said unto him, I am the most high. Power Almighty, be fruitful and multiply. A nation and a company of nations shall be of thee, and kings shall come out of thy loins. All right. So, nation and company of nations shall be of thee. All right. That's talking about who? Israel, man. Okay. A nation and company of nations, man. Each tribe is like a nation. All right. Like a nation within a nation, man. Hey, even in the kingdom, it says how a little one shall become a thousand, a, a, a small one, a strong nation. So, even in the kingdom, all right, you're going to have a nation, all right? You're going to have so many children, that's going to be a nation if you're uh, of uh, uh, Israelite descent, man, all right? Which that's known through faith, all right? Romans 8, uh, the 8th chapter. Okay, the spirit beareth witness with our spirit that we are the children of the most high, man. So if your spirit bears witness with this proper doctrine, all right, it's because what, man? Hey, the Lord, uh, because you're Israelite, plain and simple, man. That faith is the indicator of, of you being an Israelite. But anyways... It says, um, Genesis chapter three and, uh, Genesis chapter 35 and verse uh, 11. And the most I said unto him, I'm the power almighty, be fruitful and multiply a nation and the company of nations shall be of thee and kings shall come out of thy loins and the land, which I gave Abraham and Isaac to thee, I will give it into thy seed after thee will I give the land. So this is key that land. All right. Knowing who is going to receive the land. See if all these if all these heathen can be incorporated in 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 the promise that was promised to, promised to Abraham and his descendants. I mean, all these heathen would be able to be in the land. All right, have an inheritance in our land. Okay, right. But is that what the Bible says? We'll go back. All right. As a matter of fact, let's finish this in Genesis seventeen, and then we'll uh, prove that Genesis seventeen and uh. And uh, seven again, and I will establish my covenant between me and thee and thy seed after thee and their generations for an everlasting covenant to be a power unto thee and to thy seed after thee. And I will give unto thee and to thy seed after thee the land wherein thou art a stranger, all the land of Canaan for an everlasting possession, and I will be their power. All right. So it talks about the seed, the physical descendants. Once again, no, no, they ain't talking about no spiritual Israel or Somebody that believes or you heard about the covenant <clears throat> and you liked it. So all of a sudden you, you just uh, uh, incorporated yourself in the contract. Now you got uh, uh, parts of that contract <laughs> inherited unto you. Uh, uh Don't work like that. All right. But this is the book of Deuteronomy <clears throat> 33 and 28. Israel then shall dwell in safety alone. Nobody is. <laughs> Nobody else. Israel shall then dwell in safety alone. We're going to inherit that land and not share with anybody. All right. Moab can't have our land. They ain't got inheritance rights in our land. None of that. Edom. No, none of that, man. It says Israel then shall dwell in safety alone. The fountain of Jacob shall be upon a land of corn and wine. Also, his heaven shall drop down dew. All right. Let's grab this. This is actually a heathen letting you know. All right, uh, uh, Balaam. All right. 
And he's prophesying through the spirit, man. This is Numbers 23 and 9. It says, uh, yep, it says, uh, for from the tops, for from the tops of the rocks, I see him. And from the hills, I behold him. Lo, the people shall dwell alone and shall not be reckoned among the nations. All right. So it talks about us dwelling alone. Who can count the dust of Jacob just to show you that it's talking about Israel and the number of the fourth part of Israel? Let me die the death of the righteous and let my last end be like his. So he said that we're going to dwell alone. OK, not reckoned amongst the nations. man. This is Numbers 23 and 17. And when he came to behold and when he came to him, behold, he stood by his. Uh, that's not it. What is it? Numbers 23 and 17. No, maybe it's nice. Salaki. I know it's another one where he said, uh, well, how do you say it? <clears throat> Not nine. Let me find it. Okay, this is, uh, uh, dang. Yeah, I thought it was, I thought it was here. Maybe I'm tripping. Mm, no, I'm pretty sure it's this chapter. Just bear with me real quick. I'm going to find it in my scripts. Maybe 20. Man, I do not know why I cannot find it. Uh, Lord's will, I can grab it. All right, I ain't going to stress about it. All right, that's the spirit. Uh, that's the next chapter. This is uh, Numbers chapter 24 and verse 17. All right, it says... It says, um, it says, I shall see him, but not now. I shall behold him, but not nigh. All right. So he's like, <laughs> I'm not going to be around. All right. That's why he said, man, let me die the death of the righteous, man. When he saw the, 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 the blood, how the Lord was going to bless Israel and everything like that. He wanted to be Israelite. All right. He wanted to be able to receive a, of, of what we'll receive, man. But he has no way in. All right. He's outside of the uh, uh, of the promises and the covenants that the Lord established between him and his people, man. All right. It says, I shall see him, but not nigh. I shall behold him, but not nigh. Uh, there shall come a star out of Jacob and a scepter shall rise out of Israel and shall smite the corners of Moab and destroy all the children of Sheth. All right. So that's it, you know, and, you know, that's 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 pretty much it on it. Let me see if there's anything else. I just ended off with this in the book of Psalms, Psalms 105 and 8. It says, he hath remembered his covenant forever, the word which he commanded to a thousand generations, which covenant he made with Abraham and his oath unto Isaac and confirmed the same unto Jacob for a law unto Israel for an everlasting covenant, saying unto thee, will I give the land of Canaan the lot of your inheritance? All right. So the physical Israelites, the physical descendants of Abraham, Isaac and Jacob, they're going to receive uh, uh, of that land, man. It's not going to be given to any other people. No heathen, no spiritual this, that, whatever, man. The physical descendants, all right? So I'm going to read uh, that Galatians 3 and 29 again. If you be Mashiachs, then are ye Abraham's seed and heirs according to the promise, all right? And the promise stated, all right, which will not be altered, will not be changed, that those physical descendants, they were going to inherit that land, all right? So a heathen cannot be inserted into this somehow, some way, man. So having that being said, Lord, what I was at a fun, I'm going to give all praises to Yahweh, Bahasham, Yahweh, Shai, Bahasham, Rakakurash, the honors to the elders and apostles of Great Millstone who rule well. Peace and salutations to the hopeful elect, pushing out this word in all sincerity and the truth. With that, I'm going to say Shalom.